Greetings, folks. Another episode of New Marine Getaway. Life Examine. Inspiring 21st Century Maroon. However, such predator-prey relationships are not stable over long periods of time. As we have seen, human society is subject to environmental carrying capacity limits, population cycles, and debt cycles analogous to the adaptive cycle in ecosystems. During the growth phase of such cycles, society as a whole tends to become less complex. Predators and prey may, be, uh, may all benefit, though to differing degrees. But during the release phase, revolution, civil war, invasion, invasion and collapse may ensue. The system of domestication partially breaks down to the detriment of both predators and prey. And we can certainly see this if you go back to, again, the early days of industrialization. You go to the late 19th, early 20th centuries. I mean, um, there's a great documentary um, which, which talks about this multi-part documentary called uh, Plutocracy. I, I think the name of the, uh, the production company is Metanoia Films, if I remember correctly. But basically, it goes into this whole history of this, you know, this violent tug of war between, uh, between labor and capital, and how really the way that they finally were able to get this sorted out was after, after labor ends up implementing what came to be known as this whole campaign of propaganda of the deed, which was basically terrorism, which would now be called terrorism, but. Um, this is, this is more or less what eventually convinced capital, right, which, com which conv convinced, you know, folks who would be, be in the classes of the robber barons and the financiers and the industrialists that it was in their best interest to sort of give a little ground, right, to concede uh, a little ground in order to get people to, to chill out a bit, to sort of placate them. And I think this gets back into the way that the strategies that are implemented to kind of maintain things, uh, it changes. You know, folks get a, they get a little smarter. They realize that, again, there's an enlightened self-interest and maybe given, you know, given, given a bit more away than they, than they have in the past, not to be too greedy, they're still too greedy, that what is the threshold, what is the threshold for things to eventually sort of turn bad for them or, or to become difficult? Because if anything, a lot of the, you know, the previous you know, inequalities of the, of the past have just become that much more, that much more amplified. If anything has changed, the, the ability to, to provide more ways of distracting people and taking, taking one's attention away from the fact that things are more unequal than they've been in the past, that's, what, that's, that's one of the things that has really changed in a, in a significant way, is that you have access to more distraction. So again, all of the sort of sort of dystopian visions that were expressed by you know a lot of the dystopian writers, like again, uh, Huxley and, and Orwell, and you know all of these people. In hindsight, they sort of underwrote it. You know, they they definitely pointed folks in the direction, but you know what you come, what you come to see now is that um, it's actually a, a much more advanced than you know than what they had written but they definitely had their finger on the pulse of where things were, were were eventually going to get to he continues and it's almost done here however such predator such predator prey relationships are not stable over long periods of time as we have seen human society is subject to environmental carrying capacity limits population cycles and debt cycles analogous to the adaptive cycle in ecosystems during the growth phase of such cycles society as a whole tends to become more complex. Predators and prey may all benefit, though to differing degrees. But during the release phase, revolution, civil war, invasion, and collapse may ensue. The, the system of domestication partially breaks down to the detriment of both predators and prey. So I, I've already read that. For, predator, for prey classes, which are already living with little or no surplus or cushion against hard times, collapse brings immediate and severe hardship. Nevertheless, prey may have opportunity to escape from, from dreary routines as the mechanisms for the maintenance of the means of predation, including the financial system, fail. There is the opportunity to form cooperative efforts to meet basic needs directly rather than via elite managed systems of production and distribution. Predator classes are initially at least somewhat insulated from hard times as the release phase of the cycle approaches. After all, they have plenty of surplus, including money, and means of mobility, hence the current elite craze 
for building bunkers in New Zealand. And there have actually been some really interesting pieces written about that. But wealth held in stocks, bonds, and derivatives can disappear virtually overnight during times of financial crisis. Under such circumstances, elites can find themselves in moral competition, not just with angry mobs or former prey, but with other elites as well. In effect, the human ecosystem in times of ecological release finds itself plagued with an overabundance of predators. During times of growth and conservation, elites maintain gatekeeping mechanisms and forms of intra-elite competition to ensure that the predatory class does not become overpopulated in relation to available prey. As the release, fra as the, as the release phase approaches, an overproduction of elites, to use Peter Turchin's phase, a phrase, leads to much fiercer, much fiercer intra-elite competition, which can take the forms of coups and revolutionary movements. So this leads us to the, to the consideration of still more biological metaphors, and this is what comes up in the other part. But again, there's a lot, there's a lot covered here, and there's, there's certainly more that I want to um, unpack here, and especially the, the, the predator-prey relationship that he... Um, the example that he provides in talking about the role that racism has, yeah, the role that, that racism has played, again, in sort of the current incarnation or the, the current uh, iteration of, of this predator-prey relationship in, in, in society and how that's played out. And in particular, I want to look at uh, a, a book that uh, is actually not widely available um, called Who Needs the Negro by uh, Sidney M. Wilhelm, uh, who was a, he was a sociologist uh, and I'm sorry, an associate professor of sociology at uh, the State University of New York at Buffalo. And his, this book is brilliant, brilliant book. And I'm not surprised that it's very difficult to get a hold of because I think he did a bit too much truth telling in that book.